You're listening to Seasons of Bling. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Seasons of Bling. I'm Bill Mason, and I am the owner, operator, designer, web guy, uh, order packer, shipper, all things for HolidaysLane.com, where I design, make by hand, and sell on uh, Etsy, my website, both ornaments as well as decorative uh, pieces for pretty much every holiday throughout the year. And if this is the first time that you are listening to me, welcome. And uh, if you have heard some of my episodes before, welcome back. This is a podcast, although it is on YouTube, so you don't have to worry about watching anything. You can just let this play in the background. I'm just going to be doing talking. If you are listening to me on YouTube Music, uh, then hello. Make sure in either case that you have uh, subscribed to my channel and are notified when new episodes drop, which are about every two weeks or so. My, my goal is every other Thursday, and we'll see where it goes from there. In today's episode, what I wanted to talk about were my sequin and beaded ornament kits, and then a, a newer addition to what I put out are uh, sequin Easter egg kits kind of why I decided to start doing them, what what jet, what started that, uh, and then how I've transitioned uh, making individual items in, into the the repeatable things um, such as such as kits. So anyway, let's let's dive in and, and we'll see where today goes. The main reason that I started um, creating these DIY uh, ornament kits where I do, in addition to selling online on, on Etsy and my website, I do in-person uh, craft fairs, uh, primarily at, at the fall time. Uh, so starting with fall festivals, going through the second week in December. I'll do a couple spring ones, but, but they're usually smaller. And during those shows, you know, I think customer or shopper reaction is really important. I like to hear what people like, what they don't like, what they're looking for. And I try and remember that and, and take it back into uh, new items. But the, the, there's a wave of comments that always... Uh, either directed direct at me directly or people were talking amongst themselves and they overheard them. Uh, when they see my ornaments, uh, particularly my satin wrapped ones that, that are beaded, um, everybody says some variation of, oh my God, my mom made that. My grandmother used to make it. My aunt used to make it. Uh, we made them as kids. We'd go over Nana's house and we would all spend the evening together making these these kinds of ornaments. And, and that went on for a season or two. Um, and a, a couple people did ask if kits were available or they talked about some of the bigger companies because there were some huge uh companies well known in the 70s that would put these kits out and at that time I didn't. Uh, part of the challenge was you know I was buying things one at a time, uh, smaller quantities, uh, so I might only have enough supplies to make two or three for myself let, let alone have somebody else to do it. And then the other challenge would be okay I've figured out what works for me how am I going to tell you how to how to follow along and and that was that was a bit of a, a challenge so eventually just just worked through it um, and and then I came up with with the kits 
Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in, in just a second. Uh, one thing that people are worried about, though, is you know if they see my ornaments, and I've been doing it for years, uh, I think I'm great at it. Uh, <laughs> people seem to be happy with my ornaments and, and the level of detail that I put and the amount of care that I put into creating each of the ornaments. And people are always worried that their, theirs are not going to look as good as maybe mine do. And maybe, maybe yours are going to be better. I, I don't know. To me, it's not about the finished product, though. Uh, I think ultimately it is about the experience, particularly if you get a bunch of people together and have them do it together, whether it's a couple friends or like those other shoppers said, you know, oh, you know, Nana would get us together and, and we would spend a night doing it. It's about the experience. It's about the time together. Um, you're you're going to always remember that evening, that day, whatever, every time you pull out your Christmas ornaments and, and you're digging through your boxes and then you get to the ornament that you made and that might remind you of, of somebody else. Um, I, I think that's ultimately the best part about making something by hand like that. Or you, you can order a bunch of kits and then make them and then give them as gifts. Because uh, a handmade item, I still think, I know a little cheesy, uh, is, uh, is, an, is a really wonderful present the thought that went into it knowing that you took the time out of your day that everyone is you know rushing around you take some time you're thinking about that person as you're making it you pick out the design based on what that person also likes or what their tree style is what their design style is and you, you pack it up and, and you give it to them and let them know that you, you made it for them. I, I think those are really special gifts. So there's certainly a lot more to it than just, oh, I'm kind of crafty. Uh, you know, oh, I'm, maybe I'm a scrapbooker and I want to try this. Or, you know, I've, I've made ornaments before, but I like that style that you have, Bill. Uh, so I'm going to give that one a shot. There, those are the... Um, those are all great reasons to, to order a kit and, and give one a, a shot. When I'm designing them, uh, what I'm trying to do is release two new ones every July for uh, Christmas in July. <laughs> so I am going to have two new ones coming out. Um, this is being recorded in, in the middle of May. So... I'll be doing the design work in, in June and then and then releasing it July 1st, probably two new ones. Um, so that's going to be exciting. So that's kind of what prompted this topic for the episode is now I'm starting to think about what the two new ones are going to be, um, you know, thinking about something different than, than what I have already. Um, I think I've talked in, in another episode uh, some of the different styles that I've come up with. And um, so these kits generally fall in the ribbon and sequin ornament style. Um, I think they're a little more not complicated, um, but just I think anybody can take a, a round foam ball some sequins, pin it to it, and it's just the, the, the sequin. It's just a matter of getting the supplies. They're, they're pretty straightforward. There's not much that I can um, design and, and share that with you. They're, they're pretty straightforward. So that's why I went with the, the ribbon and the sequin and, and beaded styles to, to give people. And that was something that, you know, I got in a habit of doing a lot of them. I uh, came up with, I guess you could call it my pattern, my, my, my work process. And I was able to write that down. Um, when I started them, I did ask some friends, hey, uh, you're going to get a free ornament out of it, but... <laughs> 
follow along my instructions and then let me know how you think you did. Um, was there anything that was confusing for you? Did you think you, oh, let me ask Bill this question, or, or was it pretty straightforward? So I got some really good feedback from people, um, did, did a couple tweaks, and, and then started having the um, instructions go out. Um, so about the actual kits themselves, what you get. Uh, and then we'll talk about what, what, how, it, how I got there. But you, you get a foam ball, uh, you get pre-cut ribbon um, that's you know long enough to, to wrap around the ornament. Uh, I, I say you get almost everything you need. <laughs> the the, the, uh, um, the only thing that's missing from the ornament kits are a couple drops of glue, like an Elmer's glue, because uh, there's really nothing small enough that I can have and then send off to you along with it. I think for the most part, um, you know, you go to a dollar store and, and, and get white glue, uh, or most people have it laying around anywhere, particularly if you're a, a crafter. Um, so that's the only bit that's missing, but you, you get the foam ball, you get the ribbon, you get the instructions, you get um, the sequins, the sequin pins, you get the little hanger for it. Um, there's different types of beads depending on which style you're picking and, and some ornamental bead caps you also get. Um, and then the instructions are step-by-step, step, broken down, and I've uh, illustrated them. Uh, I'm not an artist, but it's enough that you could see exactly what you're supposed to do in that particular step. Uh, and those were interesting to develop. Uh, I think for me, writing out the step-by-steps were, were pretty easy for me to do. Um, you know, I've, I've run through them myself a couple times and, and made sure I wasn't skipping any steps or was trying to add any notes where if I were sitting with you one-on-one -on -one and I was showing you how to make an ornament that um, any tidbits, uh, any extra bit of information that I would share verbally, I'm, I'm trying to write down as well. I don't want to make it overly complicated. So I, I think there's a good balance there of the written instructions. And then I just spent some time drawing things out um, or redrawing them or re-redrawing them. Uh, so that it, it made sense what you're supposed to do in the step or what way the sequin was supposed to be, uh, what order you put things on a pin before putting it into the ornament, that kind of thing. Um, so they're, they're not professional, um, you know, paid illustrator level instructions, but they're, they're, they're pretty good, I think. Um, and then that's all wrapped up and, and you get in a little uh, cellophane baggie that, you know, once everything's done, you could put the order back in the baggie for, for storage. Um, so that's, um, that's more or less what you get when you order the, the kits. Um, now the eggs are a little bit different because the, the eggs are, um, just that one color sequin. There's there's not a lot to that one. Um, the egg shapes are a little bit harder to find in craft stores, particularly all year round. The the round ones you you can buy yourself, but it's usually like a six pack or a twelve pack or whatever. Um, really, once you if you were to go and buy all the supplies in uh, like a Joann's or a Michaels. It's going to cost you a lot more. Yes, you'll be able to get more ornaments out of it, but um, the overall cost is a lot more than just ordering one of the kits with just what you need for it. Um, and, and like I said, the eggs are a little more difficult to find um, in your local stores. So that's why I felt better about that. Um, and I do try to offer a lot of different sequin color combinations that you wouldn't normally get out of Michael's or Joann's, uh, any other craft store. 
um, more than just your usual, you know, red, red, green, blue, silver, and, and gold, I guess. And they're the same sequins that I order in bulk. Um, so I, I order large quantities of it. Then I just count out roughly how many you're going to need for, for each item you're, you're making. And the Easter eggs were new for uh, 2023. Um, so, because any time I was at the craft fair, you know, that's another question I had. So, oh, do you have these as a kit? So now I can say yes. Um, I've had the the other kits for the Christmas ornaments for a couple of years now, but so what what goes into designing the kits? And and there's a couple things. Uh, first thing that I I do is make sure that I'm able to get enough supplies of all of the elements that I could actually have, you know, uh, a lot of different, or, or a large quantity of the same ornament kit. Um, so whether it's like the little bead cap toppers that are on there, I, I made sure to get large quantities of that. And then I, I have those elements kind of laid out in front of me, and very similar to how I create the ornaments that I make myself and, and sell as I just lay the components out and then I, I try and figure out what's speaking to me. So I might start with the ribbon uh, or a color. Uh, you know, purple is something that is a, a very popular color or your traditional red color. Uh, I try to stay away from green because green on a green Christmas tree kind of blends in. Um, if there's colors that you guys are looking for kit-wise, you know, uh, if you head to HolidaysLane.com, there's a contact section. You can let me know or you can message me on Etsy because um, I'm always trying to keep an eye out for, for what people need that, you know, is a little bit different than what you get in, in the average store. Um, so let's say I start with a ribbon because it's really pretty and I have a lot of it. <laughs> um... Then from there, I might, you know, pick the right sequins. Is it more um, sparkly traditional Christmas? Then that's usually when I'll use metallic sequins. Is it more of a rustic woven ribbon? Then maybe I would do the satin or, or matte sequins in uh, different colors. Uh, just kind of seeing what feels right together. Um, and then, you know, trying to take a look at, okay, okay is it going to be just the round ornament? Is this one going to have a, a bead column at the bottom or a, a couple fun beads at the top? It, it sort of varies depending on, you know, just like I said, how it, I hate, there's no other way of saying it for me. It's just how it feels. Does it feel right? Does it look right? Uh, from an aesthetic perspective. Um, so once I get that created, um, then I'll write the instructions out for it, um, and then it's time to photograph it. So I'll, I'll have at least a finished one, and I always bring the finished one with me when I do craft fairs so that they could see what it looks like, and then they could just, you know, oh, I like that one. Um, and then I, I pull out the kit. Uh, but I also need that for the listing online. And then I will make up uh, a set of all the components. So I'll have you know, a little baggie with the sequins, a little baggie with the uh, glass beads, a, a little baggie with all the um, pins and eye hooks and, and things like that, uh, the ribbon, um, the one of the foam balls that is undecorated. I'll lay them out, I'll photograph them, um, then I'll do some video work of it, um, and then I'll, I'll make, you know, a certain number of that one, uh, set it aside, and then I, I list it online. So the, there is a, a fair amount of time taken, uh, both with the design 
portion of it as well as just getting them ready to be sold uh, <clears throat> that <laughs> You know, counting out, uh, you know, 350 sequins <laughs> over and over again. Um, it's not the most fun thing in the world, but sometimes you get in that groove and, and you're just, you're going through it. Uh, so hopefully I'm in the right headspace when I need to do it. <laughs> um, uh, and then I have some cheater, cheat ways of, of doing my um, glass beads. I, I use a, a tool um, and I know like, two of that equals the right amount. <laughs> I won't go into details on that one. That's my industry secret. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and, and then I just set aside. Uh, I, I usually will promote on my um, Instagram or my TikTok when the, the new things are available. Um, usually the first group that gets to see them uh, are those that are on my mailing list um, and, and try and give them an opportunity to get first grab of uh, any of the new stuff when it comes out in July um, and then a little more broadly um, released in, in the middle of the month uh, for July. And then I will keep refilling them uh, as long as I have enough of the materials and as long as they're selling. Um, so as long as I can get something, I'll, I'll just, you know, if I sell out, uh, then I'll just spend some time and I'll make another, you know, batch of them to go out. Uh, I think there have been two of my kits that have, uh, not by my choice, but run out of material, so they have been retired. Uh, one of them was like a, a purple and gold snowflake one. Uh, I kind of really missed that one because it was a super pretty ribbon. Uh, it was a beautiful color purple. Uh, it was almost like a, I don't know, like a light powder purple. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, but it, it was really pretty, uh, particularly next to the gold. So that was a sad day when, when that one went away. Um, but other, other than that, most of the ones that uh, I have out there um, have been around for a little while. My most popular one is, and I got, I just, I knew it was going to be popular. <laughs> sometimes you, sometimes you know, sometimes you don't know, but this one has uh, alternating red and green Christmas lights on like a, a strand. Uh, and I have one where the, it's red sequins and one that is, um, I think it is a green sequins. Um, and, and that one, I just seem to like keep making batches every so often because, because that one's my, my biggest seller. Um, so it's not, it's nice when you, when you have that feeling that something might possibly be popular than it actually is. Uh, although those, I tend not to remember as much as <laughs> when I think something is going to be popular and it's not, <laughs> and it just sits there, sits there. Oh, I, okay, I was wrong on that one. <laughs> um, but eventually, you know, somebody's going to come along and, and is going to like it. Um, so that, that's fine. But, uh, so, I think, yeah, I, I, I think the, the biggest challenge on those really is, um, just getting in and getting the supplies in, in, in a bulk fashion, you know, uh, something I've, I've struggled with when I first started and thankfully I've got some really good wholesalers now that I, um, order from, um, in a couple of cases, maybe right from the manufacturer, which is also really good. Um, I, I try to get as much as I can from the U S although I mean, very little is made in the U.S. anymore. So at least I'm trying to support a, a U.S. company where I can. Um, it's just that, you know, a lot of things are just made in China or India. Um, in some cases, uh, other countries are just more well-known for high-quality items. Like, that's where I, uh, when I get my bigger glass beads for my ornament ornaments, you know, those are from the Czech Republic because they just, they can't be beat. They're the, one of the top areas in the world 
for for his glass beads, followed next by Japan. So um, it, it is what it is. Oh, I hate that phrase. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, so hopefully you enjoyed me talking through my ornament kits. Uh, if you are an individual who remembers your aunt, your mom, your grandma, who's making those kits, um, you know, let me know in comments because I, I still love hearing that. The the one thing that I haven't quite been able to figure out how to make again, and this is the other bit that I hear about at, at the craft fairs, are the uh, the beaded and sequined fruit. <laughs> um, so there there's like sequined bananas and apples and oranges and grapes. And actually, somebody that I know recently just uh, had texted me. Uh, she was over a friend's house, uh, at, or her friend's parents' house, and there were these um, beaded raspberries, and uh, I couldn't tell if they were grapes or blackberries um, in, in the pictures. But she was like, "They've been in the same spot for 50 years." <laughs> uh, so it's funny that people think about me when they, they come across those kinds of things. Uh, so who knows, maybe one day if I could figure out uh, how they were made originally, if, if it's something that I could do again, I might put out a fruit bowl or something like that. Um, but that, that could be, <laughs> could be kit, kit type number three. Who knows? Um, so anyway, <laughs> I, I digress. Um, so thank you for listening. Uh, if you are on YouTube, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you like it, uh, don't forget to like, you know, to subscribe. Uh, so you hear when the next episode comes out. I don't know what I'm going to talk about next, but I'll, I'll figure it out by then. So thank you very much for listening. Head on over to holidayslane.com. That's holidays with an S where every day is a holiday.